Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, I got some doozies for you. Looking through silicon to see the inside structure without any kind of invasive attacks. A firmware bootloader exploit that allows you to just dump the memory from this chip. And we're going to debunk a smart meter hack video that was shown using a flipper zero to turn your power on and off. Uh, it turns out, I don't really think that's the case. Let's get into it. Now our first story, invisible silicon. Andrew Huang, also known as Bunny, has been around the hacking scene for a long time. He had a book that came out a long time ago. It's called Hacking the Xbox. It's a great read on the process of attacking that platform. Now on his blog, he goes into great detail and shows how silicon itself is actually transparent to infrared light. This means if you use a camera and infrared LEDs, you can actually see inside of the silicon. You can see the structure and you can verify that the part is what it says it is on the outside. Now this is only for what are called flip chip type devices, which is where the pads are on the bottom, they flip it over, put it on the board, and the top of the chip is actually just the silicon itself. If you take a camera, you remove the IR cut filter and use a certain range of IR LEDs. If it's too low, below a thousand something nanometers, the chip won't look transparent. And if it's too high, like say 1200 nanometers, the sensor's imager, the imager in the camera itself, won't be sensitive enough to pick up that light. So he found about 1050 nanometers is where you need to be. And he shows a link on his blog where you can buy these LEDs and a camera. It's pretty awesome. Now on to the bootloader exploit. Now for a little context, what is a bootloader? It's like the BIOS on a computer. It's a very basic kind of uh, operating system that's in there. And you use the bootloader to load your own code into the chip, which is ultimately what you run. Now this device Aaron was looking at, it's one of these little price tag replacement devices. You put it on a grocery store shelf and you load in an e-paper display with uh, whatever pricing you want. He was looking at the board, he wanted to dump the firmware. So he was trying your standard attacks. He was trying to see if he could glitch it or read it out through JTAG or something else. And the chip was all locked down. It has security features. Those security features are there so that when you write your code and load it into the chip, somebody else can't just read it out and copy it and make their own device. Now what Aaron did was write a very small program. All that program does was read the flash memory and dump it out of the serial port. Just very small. What he found when he programmed this device, he reprogrammed it. That's the only way to get past the security features. You have to erase it and you write new firmware onto it. When he wrote his new program on and he had it dump the memory, what he found was that after a little bit of dumping the memory in some blank space, it actually dumped all the rest of the code that was in this device because it didn't actually erase the whole device. It only erased a small portion to write his code in and the rest of the code in there was kept. Now, when he published this, Patrick at WCH, who's a technical director, reached out to him and let him know, actually, this is a feature. I know, it's actually a feature. So the feature is, I wanna be able to reprogram this chip faster. So don't erase all the memory, just erase what I define in it it was set, in this case, to 8K of the memory, not all of the memory. Now, I would call this a bug because any feature that a manufacturer provides that lets you do something this horrific, which is basically have your code dumped out in the simplest possible manner, is crazy. There's no world in, in where I come from where that's a feature. That's just a plain bug. Now, you should know that the bootloader version that this works on is 2.8. That's important because this feature, I'm sure will be fixed in a future release to actually be what it should be, which is if you set all the code protect bits, you can't get the freaking code out. Like it's pretty plain and simple. So be on the lookout for that. And finally, you're gonna love this one. Peter Fairley recently dropped a video where he shows using a flipper zero which is like a little RF multi-tool hacking device. It's been in the news all over the place. The flipper does this, the flipper does that. You know, it's, it's all the hype. He shows it in front of a smart meter, two different meters, and he's able to send some command to that meter, which causes it to freak out. 
and the lights turn on and off in his house, and in another video, the smart meter actually smokes. Now this is crazy. Obviously a lot of people in the comments are asking, how did you do this? You know, I want to do this. Are smart meters secure? All these kinds of things. So naturally, being that I have some kind of, you know, crazy obsession with smart meters, I mean, that's the wording that my therapist uses. I prefer to say a deep interest. Now there's some things in this video that just didn't add up for me. First of all, prominently you see Ameren displayed on the front of the meter. So you look up Ameren as a power provider. They cover Illinois and Missouri. Okay, that's fine. So he must be in Illinois or Missouri. But you listen to Peter's voice. Uh, he's got kind of, um, what would I say? A uh, Canadian twang. Let's put it that way. Hmm. That looks interesting. It just, uh, his, his system chooches different than ours. So that's the first red flag. Okay, so his meter says Ameren, but he's not in Ameren's service area. He's actually in Mississauga, Ontario, which is Electra. Now, Electra would be very weird for them to deploy meters that said Ameren on the front of them. Now, the second red flag for me is that a lot of people ask Peter, how did you do this? How did you do this? And he won't, he won't divulge the information. If you look at the research that I've done, most research that anybody does, it's published, it's out there. There's a little saying, it's POC or GTFO. If you can't prove what you did, if you can't show it, I've got to really question if you're actually doing what you say you did. Now, the other interesting thing is those meters that you see in the video, these Elster, there's an A1 RL plus and an A3 TL. The craziest thing is neither one of those meters actually support or have the ability to turn power on and off. Now, what they do have the ability to do is control a little relay board which you can send a signal to something else, which means that in Peter's house, there's some relays set up somewhere that actually switch the power on and off that could be controlled by these meters, or they could be controlled by something else. It does look like he sends a signal to his meter and that causes this kind of glitch to happen. But this is in no way related to those meters being able to turn power on and off like a service disconnect. Landis and Gear has meters that I've shown in other videos of mine that actually do have a service disconnect capability inside of them. These meters do not, which means inside of Peter's house, he has some other kind of device that this is reaching out to and controlling. The craziest thing of all is I found Peter's address. You can find Peter's address too he has a cool video where he shows using a GPS module with a flipper and he doesn't do such a hot job of blocking out his GPS coordinates. So looking at Peter's house, you can see there's actually a meter that is probably the power company's meter near the curb where the other meters on the houses are installed. But these two other meters that Peter has on his house, they aren't part of the power company's meters. It looks like these are something Peter just installed. He probably got them off of eBay because you and I can go on eBay right now and buy these literal exact same meters that are on his house. And he set it up perhaps for some kind of tests or something else. So in summary, if you have a flipper zero and you go to Peter's house and Peter gives you this little code he's sending, you can turn Peter's lights on and off. But if you go anywhere else in Canada or in the US or anywhere else around the world, it's not going to do a damn thing. So we're going to have to call cap on Peter's hack. That's all I have for you this week. Thanks a lot for joining. We'll see you next week on Reverse Engineering News.